Uh, the most important characteristics of migration or cross the border migration is um, its volume and also its diversity. Um, so when we talk about the global trend and um, migrants are still continuing to move from the south to the north uh, nation states, right? from the less developed countries to the m more developed countries. But uh, there are also a substantial trend of migration is happening within Asia. So Asian countries, they are unique in that they are simultaneously countries of origin, sending immigrants out, and also countries of destination. And when they are becoming countries of destination, that is when, the, when those countries are receiving migrants, so what we are saying about the patterns of migration and the patterns of integration would not be the same as those understood from the Western experience or from the experience of the Global North. When we are looking at the, um, the receiving countries, in the established theories, there is this assumption about a unified core. That is, the core is dominated by a single group, by a single culture. Like in the United States, it's dominated by white Anglo-Saxon Protestant culture. And that's the core culture that immigrants are expected to assimilate into. But in Asian countries, the core culture is not that unified. It could be very diverse, and it, you know, it's still evolving. So there is, I would argue that there is no single group that dominates the core. Singapore is a multicultural society, so their core is composed of different cultures, different languages. Um, so you. Could, you, even though the Chinese Singaporeans are 75% of the population, you could not say that the, the Chinese Singaporeans are dominating the mainstream. Like the mainstream also composed of Malay Singaporeans and Indian Singaporeans. In the existing theory or classical theory of international migration, they treat migrants as more as settlers, even though my, a lot of migration flows are sojourning flows or temporary flows. But when we look at the migrants in uh, moving to the global north countries, we have the implicit or explicit assumption that they are settled they are settled there eventually. So with resettlement comes the issue of integration, adaptation, or assimilation. So in, but in the Asian countries, the expectation of assimilation is not that explicit, and it's not even expected. Well, and in Asian countries, we also see the more fluid uh, transnational flow. And people are moving across borders and back and forth. And sometimes they physically settle in one place, but they, you know, their daily routine and activities are um, transnational. Whereas, say, in the United States, it's more difficult to do that. And transnationals tend to be those people who are highly integrated, then they are, they are more mobile. Whereas in Asian countries, both the highly integrated immigrants and also the low skill, they are moving, they, they are moving across the borders more so. Like for example, again, taking the example of Singapore, you see the Malaysian workers working in Singapore and cross the border on a daily basis. So that's the border to to them is more fluid.